All right, we are live. Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. I'm excited to have one returning friend and a new friend on today. Nathan Felix is with us. Molly Anderson, Molly Ann Anderson is with us. Uh, we're going to talk about an upcoming event. I know you all love music of any kind, creativity of any kind. And if you watched the last show with Nathan, you know he is incredibly creative and wonderful. And, and so I'm excited to have you both here today. How are you? Great. I'm doing well. Thank you again, Ted, for uh, having us on. Appreciate it. I'm excited. And your the sign behind you reminds me I need another cup of coffee, just for the record. Uh, all right. So you know how this goes. We love origin story here. And so, Nathan, tell us a little bit about you. And then we will have you introduce Molly. So Molly can tell us a little bit about her. All right. I'll give you the very brief version. I grew up in Austin, played guitar, started a punk band, toured the U United States, got bored, fell in love with film music, got bored, taught myself how to write for orchestra, got bored, started writing for choir, got bored. Now I write for opera. Not bored yet. <laughs> I love the, uh, I still have to figure out the punk, punk band part. Um, that is just such, what an evolution you have gone through. Um, all right. Well, thank you. And uh, he's a great talent, does a lot, travels. Uh, he even had us on his calendar because I actually looked at it. I loved that people could tune in uh, when we had a different time. Uh, all right. So Molly Ann Anderson is also with us. Hi, Molly. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> excited. All right. So tell us a little bit about you and your background. Sure. So um, I grew up in Orlando. Uh, born and raised here in Florida. Um, music was just in the household. Both my parents played piano and I just grew up with it around me. So I knew that that was what I was meant to do. Seeing I, I played flute in high school. So I was just surrounded by music and uh, went to college for it. Got uh, two degrees, bachelor of music and master's of music, which I did graduate during the pandemic in 2020. So it was a little rough start being thrown into the adult world and uh, the music industry. But uh, I always tell myself, sing through everything. So I performed in many different things and that's how Nathan and I met through Fringe. And it was oh, a great connection. Fringe. Yes, yes. Um, it wrote a wonderful show called The Wizard of Lock Haven Park. And it was such a unique performance because it was outside and it was a choose your own adventure. So the audience chose their fate depending which way they went, how their story ended. And it was almost like an operetta. So it was really cool. Got to sing and um, it brought this new opportunity to me and Nathan and I meeting. So it was wonderful. I, I have a couple questions for you before we sure. move to the event. What high school did you go to? I went to, I, I grew up here. So what high school? Oh, did you great. Go to? I went to Dr. Phillips High School. Yes, which wasn't even born back. I wasn't even made back in the Stone Age when I went. Um, <laughs> And then I love, I have to give a shout out, you know, Brian Sikorsky is a friend of mine. I love him. So Fringe, everything about Fringe, I love. I think it's one of the most creative yet unknown uh, events and things that we put on in Orlando and people just don't realize how powerful and how much talent travels from all over to uh, perform in Fringe. So kudos to you guys. It's, it's a great, great, great uh, event there. All right. So, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about your event. So Nathan, tell us what's coming up. Well, like Molly said, I met her at Fringe and she was singing in this uh, operetta that I composed and she had such a beautiful voice. And I looked at her and I said, Molly, I said, if I can book a concert that's an opera in Orlando, would you sing in it? And she just said, yes. So I said, okay. So I, I, I got on a scooter and I rode my scooter down to Timaquah, <laughs> and I knocked on the door. Um, Benoit answered, and I, I said, I want to see your place. Everybody tells me Timaquah is a brilliant venue. He showed it to me. We talked for about 20, 30 minutes, and I said, I want to book a, an opera here. And he said, OK, well, just email me. And I said, no, I don't want to leave here without booking an opera. <laughs> that was probably you. smart with Benoit, for sure. <laughs> you had to get it done right then. <laughs> so he said, December 10th. I said, that's good. I got my scooter. I went back to Fringe Grounds and I said, Molly, I got a date, December 10th. Can you do it? Please say yes. She said yes. And the opera that I had in mind for her, her was this opera called the, the War Bride that I wrote about my, my grandmother, my late grandmother, uh, and her story of coming to America, yeah, being a, a British um, 
a British citizen and marrying my grandfather, who was Mexican, um, during World War II. And so it's, this is a story about her. And then this is a double build opera. So because they're both short, they're both about half hour. So the other one is about a, a dear friend, one of my best friends, that his father was an Air Force hero and he was shot and um, shot down and, and unfortunately killed in a, uh, an attack on Libya in, in the 80s. All right, so I have to say, and I know you've muted yourself because it's a little loud, but not distracting, just so you know, so I don't feel bad, Nathan. Um, two completely different stories. And, you know, opera is known for most of, most people think there's tragedy. There's a lot of comedy in opera, but I love, uh, I love the love story part about War Bride. I think that's amazing. What's the motivation, Nathan? Obviously these are personal stories, but how do you, what's your process of bringing that to life in an opera? I mean, most people would write a book, maybe write a song, but a whole opera around those stories. How do you do it? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, I, I, I try to find stories that not are necessarily forgotten, but stories that, that are, are not as common. And I try and find within the minutia, like a love story or a connection or something that people can relate to. And you, you, you sort of hit the, the, the nail on the head with the war bride being a love story, right? It's about this journey of uh, discovery, uh, you know, a 20 year old British woman coming into a new, a new country as an immigrant, but like, <laughs> Sorry. You're good. That's the great part about live. The yeah. audience loves it. You're good. The core is uh, the core is that 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 love story. And, and um, so that's what I'm always looking for. I, I like the drama. I like the love tales. I, I've yet to really uh, delve into a comedic um, angle in my operas just because I love drama. I, I want people to cry. I want them to feel emotional. So So that's what I look for. So let me ask you, Molly, so you're 12, and I mean that respectfully, you're very <laughs> young. Um, how do you get, because you, I know you, in order to perform, I know you have to feel it, you have to, uh, you have to understand the emotions. How do you get into a story singing a song about uh, a war bride or a Libyan pilot that's shot down? How, how do you get into the <laughs> character enough to emote the words and, and perform the emotion that I know Nathan's trying to get across. Well, one thing I love about opera and even sometimes in musical theater, it's not only about the music that you're personally singing and the, the lyrics, but the orchestra as a role um, and your, your co-performers uh, relating uh, those lyrics together and also where the notes are going. So the music itself is its own personality and, and role in a way. So finding a way, like looking at a phrase and seeing, oh, what kind of emotion is here or dynamics. I'm singing soft, but why am I singing soft? So it's taking the time to study the score and, and look at the small details where it can bring, bring the character out. And also finding the emotions, uh, looking back at maybe your own life and remembering a moment that I might have felt alone, like, uh, Jean, she's traveling by herself across the country. So finding a moment where I could relate that to my life so I can bring out a true um, organic emotion on stage. Do you get do you get emotional? Have you ever cried in a performance? Is there because I feel like when I sing, I'm not an opera singer, I'm a more a shower singer, but when I sing <laughs> and it's a song that I relate to or brings me back to a memory, I can get choked up. So how do you, do you balance that? Or have you ever lost it on stage? Or how does that all work? Because I know you feel it. Creatives feel things uh, when they're yes. performing or doing whatever their creative work is. The It's happened to me on stage one time. And that was during my senior recital for my undergrad. And my mistake was I looked at my parents and they were crying because they were so proud. <laughs> and it got me going. And then, but I started over and it was all good. But then there was not a dry eye in the house. So <laughs> it kind of added to the performance. It worked. But other roles All right. I've done. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. No, please go ahead. Yeah. Other roles. Um, I think the emotion, yeah. I think what's great is when a performer and artist can actually, the audience can sense that they are feeling it. And it's not a vanilla kind of bland. You're just going through the motions. I can tell the difference. And I know the audience can too. The audiences are very smart and intuitive. And so how awesome for them to be able to feel 
what you're feeling uh, when you're performing. All right, so um, it's time for a little snippet. I'm gonna take myself off and I'm gonna let you do your snippet. And then when we come back, you're, you guys are gonna tell us how they can get tickets and how they can attend. So go for it. Great. <laughs> oh, hold on. That's not me. That's see, this is what happens when you when you do this. <laughs> I'm here with All right. So I'm gonna sing a snippet from Jean's Aria on the train. So this is her starting her journey to America. It's a gorgeous piece. I love singing it. <laughs> Let me get this set up. It. And you know, I, first of all, I love your voice is beautiful. Of course. Thank you so what much. Gift. What a gift. But you know what? I was I was actually watching Nathan. And so how beautiful is that to watch him see you bring his vision, his story, and a very personal one to life. I think that is a gift. How amazing. You guys are awesome. All right. So tell them how they can get tickets, where they need to go, how they buy them, how they how they attend. Nathan, uh, tell us the 411. Yeah, let's do it. And also, you can tell why I came up to Molly and grabbed her and said, let's Absolutely. Do oh, my God, yes. Um, so, Friday. It's this Friday, December 10th at Timaqua. And that's at 2000 South Summerlin. Look, I memorized that. And <laughs> you can get tickets. They're on sale. There are a handful of tickets left. And it's at Timaqua.com, which is T-I-M-U-C-U-A.com. And there's a handful of tickets left. It's Friday at 7. And it starts off with Ribas Dominici, which is the other opera about the Air Force hero. And then the headlining operetta is The War Bride, featuring Molly Ann Anderson. Amazing. Thank you both. Such talents. You obviously have a great heart. And I love having you on. Please come back anytime. Yaltemaquad.com. I will tag it when I... Uh, post the show, which it's live now, but I will put it in the comments so you can get your tickets. There's a few tickets left. Uh, don't be afraid of opera. Don't be afraid of this kind of genre of music. Don't be intimidated by it. You can see the passion 
that Nathan and Molly have for their their creations. And so you all will enjoy it and you will love it. So thank you both so much. Such great talents. Come back anytime. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. All right. Y'all have a great one. Break a leg. Do we say that in opera? I don't know, but um, I don't really want you to Toy, break. toy, toy. <laughs> there you go. All <laughs> That's right. the opera version. <laughs> the opera one good. All right. So I will not say break a leg. Thank you both so much. Thanks for your patience. Uh, get out and support the arts, guys. Uh, Timaqua.com and get your tickets for Friday night. We'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Bye.